This slide was the inspiration for the other document you'll find uh, in Chapter 3 that has a similar title dealing with ring flipping and cyclohexane. These are two chair conformations and the green and red bonds that are highlighted uh, are colored that way so that you can notice what it says at the bottom there. That when one ring kind of flips into the other conformation, everything that was equatorial becomes axial and vice versa. Now, all the bonds that are up, whether they are equatorial up or axial up, they stay up when you do this ring flipping. It just converts axial and equatorial bonds into each other. And this is something that's very easy to appreciate if you actually have a three-dimensional model of cyclohexane where you can manipulate it with your hands and can actually see that this does occur. Um, if you grab a hold of carbons at the opposite sides of the ring and pull one up while you pull the other one down, it will cause this inversion of the ring, this flipping of the ring, and again it will cause all of the bonds to change their angles. Uh, axial bonds become equatorial and so forth. Um, and the ability of cyclohexane to do this becomes important when we replace any of the hydrogens with uh, any other substituents. Because as we'll see, there's a preference for such substituents to be in an equatorial position rather than axial. Doesn't really matter if they are so-called up or down, but it does matter as far as axial and equatorial. And this next slide shows some results that uh, illustrate this point. Uh, the arrows going in both directions means that these two conformations can flip back and forth. But this uh, first set of arrows, it's pointing heavily towards the right and only a little bit towards the left, corresponding to these percentages you see. Methyl cyclohexane doesn't tend to exist very often with the methyl group in an axial position. And it doesn't have to because the ring can flip and what's an axial up methyl group becomes equatorial up. For the fluorocyclohexane, the preference for equatorial is not as great. It's a 60-40 split, but the equatorial position is still favored. Fluorine is a smaller substituent than methyl. That's why it doesn't make as much difference. Tertiary butyl is one of the biggest substituents that we're going to see consistently in this course. And because of those methyl groups pointing out in these directions, that makes this a very uh, large type of substituent. And so look at the big preference for it being an equatorial, greater than 99.99%. In fact, chemists use a tertiary butyl group to lock chair conformations uh, like you see on the right so that it virtually all the molecules exist in that conformation. Um, and again, it's just by virtue of being able to flip the ring that that tertiary butyl group doesn't have to put up with being axial. Uh, and so it practically all of the molecules uh, exist in that arrangement. The percentages here aren't important. Uh, the take-home message is just that if a ring flipping can have the effect of making an axial substituent equatorial, that equatorial position will be favored. Just like we say that staggered conformations are better than eclipsed conformations. And in all of these uh, structures, all of the bonds are staggered. We don't have to worry about that, uh, but it is just a matter of rotating carbon-carbon bonds in order to get one of these conformations to look like the other. This next slide shows why it's the case that equatorial is better. You really can't see this with the models because the atoms are really further apart than they would be in real life. But when you have something like a T-butyl group here in the axial position, it's kind of bumping up against these hydrogens that are also axial but two carbons away. So these are called 1-3 diaxial interactions or repulsions. And that repulsing, repulsing effect is so great that the T-butyl group refuses to put up with it. Uh, so when that ring flips, the T-butyl group is not engaging in any axial interactions. It's only these hydrogens at the bottom doing that, and they're tiny, so that's not a really big deal. So it's a form of steric strain that's being avoided when something like uh, tertiary butyl groups can assume an axial arrangement, excuse me, equatorial arrangement. 